Wow, what a nice vibe, what amazing music. This is so nice. Um, I wanted to, uh, once again, thank everyone that is with us, that is here listening to our eighth TL talk. Um, I couldn't be happier. We've had more than 10,000 people listen in to our talks and it's a tremendous, tremendous honor. Um, to have, and I see so many familiar names from the travel industry, general managers, uh, hoteliers, travel agents. Um, it's just fantastic. I feel blown away by the, you know, just, just the, the, the community that we live in. So thank you. And if you're, if you're a journalist or in the events field or uh, food and beverage, I appreciate it. So thank you so, so much. Um, for those that do not know me, my name is Tina Lira. I am the founder of TL Portfolio. We are a representation and communication agency with offices in Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Mexico, LA, and New York. I have an amazing team of 17 women who have supported me and who I adore um, and who make all of this possible. So to my team, thank you so much. I have to make a shout out that I haven't done before because I have such an incredible support system and there's so much going on in all of our lives. But my husband is, I, it's, it's hard to put into words. He is an amazing, amazing support. And I usually forget to say it. So here it goes publicly, thank you. Um, we all have to thank and we all have to be grateful. So there you go. This is my, you know, my, my little touch. Anyway, um, I wanted to, um, you know, let, everybody knows why we do this, the objective of these uh, TL talks. And that is really to talk about topics that are relevant, that are in everybody's minds. But instead of trying to predict the future, which nobody knows, um, and we're all in kind of this confusion together, we're here to have a positive outlook on things. If we don't know what's going to happen, why not imagine the glass half full? So it's my pleasure to bring and unite and a panel of fantastic women. Um, I'm flattered to have this powerhouse of incredible, incredible female power um, that are experts in their fields and with knowledge, with experience, uh, with information can offer a uh, positive view without you know, that fear of being naive because they're equipped with all the incredible baggage of years of wisdom. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, introduce our panel. I'm gonna start with Liz Biden. Uh, Liz is the founder and owner of the Royal Portfolio and she is an icon. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Liz for a long time. Uh, if you can see her background, then I think you could see and it says so much about Liz. Um, she has an incredible passion. She doesn't consider what she does work. Um, it's her life. And anybody that has the pleasure and the opportunity to have stayed in a Royal Portfolio Hotel uh, will know that you're actually, more than anything, you're going to one of Liz's homes and you're being part of their life and you're being part of their you know, family. And that's what I think that makes all the difference. Um, so she's the owner of uh, Royal Malawan in Thorny Bush in, the, in Kruger, uh, one of the favorite properties of Elton John, for example. Uh, Birkenhead House in Hermanus, which used to be their uh, beach property, oceanfront. Uh, La Residence in Franschhoek, which has been named several times as the best property uh, in the world by Condé Nast and Travel and Leisures and numerous awards. Uh, most recently, the Silo in Cape Town, which again, another icon. So Liz, it's an amazing pleasure to have you here. I am clearly a huge fan. Um, so I'm honored to have your, to, have, to the fact that you agreed to, to join us. So thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, another person that I'm very fond of, Cindy Novotny is the founder of Master Connections. Um, she's an international icon in hospitality, in trainings on leadership, sales, customer service. She's also on the board of directors of Miss, um, Miss America Foundation, recognized by the Association of Talent Development as one of, one of, five, uh, one of nine of the most powerful innovative speakers in the industry. In 2019, the HSMI awarded Cindy the Lifetime Achievement Award for Hospitality for her contribution. And I can say that in my career, her mm -hmm. contribution has been 
tremendous. Um, during my years with the Ritz Carlton in New York, I had the pleasure of going through numerous uh, trainings and Cindy was that driving force. And my team has been trained on all of your, uh, all of your tools because I keep all the binders and my team knows leap and they know, and it all comes from you. So thank you. You're part of the success of my company and I appreciate it. So thanks oh. for agreeing to be here. Thank you, Tina. Um, I'm going to introduce you also to Cristiana Archeangeli. She is probably a new face for most people outside of Brazil, but in Brazil, she's a very recognized and um, influenced, uh, influential person. She's a presenter, entrepreneur. She's CEO of Beauty In. She's a, a businesswoman, lecturer, consultant, known in Brazil as being one of the highlights of the Shark Tank Brazil program founder of numerous very successful companies. She's also advisor to Endeavor, has three published books, uh, numerous awards. I tried to count, but there were more than 24, so I stopped, including uh, being named Most Influential Woman and Personality of the Year by the governor of the state of Sao Paulo. So, Cris, thank you for agreeing to be here with us and share your wisdom. Thank you very uh, much for the invitation. I'm very ha happy to be here. Thank nice you. to meet you all. <laughs> Um, another very close friend who I admire greatly, Tiffany Dowd. She is founder and president of Lux Social Media. Cindy's known in the industry as an expert in global luxury hospitality, recognized as the influencer by Boston Magazine and one of the top 25 most influential people in digital uh, luxury by Verb Brands. She's also been featured as one of the top accounts to follow on Instagram by Travel and Leisure. She's a freelance journalist, contributes to numerous publications such as US Today and others. And she is, she was my neighbor when I lived in Turks and Caicos. We have known each other for a long time when we were island girls um, and we had great stories to share. And I remember back in the day when Cindy, uh, Tiffany went to her first trade show, I happened to have my <laughs> table next to her and she kept going, how, how does this work again? What, what's going, you know? And it was so nice because I was able to show her a little bit of the travel agency. And then if you fast forward very few years from there, I'm the one walking behind Tiffany going, Tiffany, who's that? And who's that? And so she dominated <laughs> the scene, just like that. I love it. Those are, those are good times. Thanks for having me, Tina. No, it's a pleasure. So um, I wanted to uh, just explain how this works. A lot of the questions here, for those that have already been watching us, uh, we have questions from journalists, uh, which we greatly appreciate. We have some of our very close friends in the travel community also contributing with questions. If you're listening and you wanna send us questions, please do so. Uh, you can send it to me by email. You can put it on our Instagram at TL Portfolio. Uh, we're on uh, LinkedIn. Just send us the questions and we'll be more than happy to um, include them in our panel. So just to start off, um, I wanted to ask everybody, and I'm going to ask everybody the same question. There's a lot being talked about the new normal, the new reality, the new this and new that. And I'd love for us to start by talking about the new fun. We're all living in very weird times under unprecedented rules and regulations. Some can go out, some can't, restaurants are closed. So Within this new reality, I'd love for you to give us firstly a little update of how life is like at home and then share with us a little story that um, we can just set the tone and make sure that we follow on in a casual and fun manner. So Cindy, I'm gonna let you start. Oh, okay. Well, uh, life at home for me has been pretty wild because last year I was only home 11 days. So now I've been home almost 12 weeks. So that in itself is pretty crazy. I mean, I will say the funniest thing I think happened in the first two weeks because I thought it would only last probably two weeks. So I still didn't unpack my suitcase and my husband, you know, we've been married a very long time. And I think that's because I traveled so much and he kept saying, are you going to unpack? I said, well, why would I unpack? I'm going to, I'm going to be leaving soon. Cause I never unpack. I unpack my clothes, but not my toiletries and makeup. And so we started to have a little bit of rumbling. I'm a like rumbler, you know, if things aren't going well, I, I don't hold it in. And at one point I looked at him at the end of two weeks, I said, wow, I mean, I wonder how many people will, will get divorced during this because it's going to be crazy. And he looked at me and he said, well, I can tell you too, that might. And I went, oh, are, are you talking about me? 
He said, well, you're going to need to just take a chill pill because I was running on extra. I just, I was trying to cure everything and put the world back on its axis all by myself. And so now fast forward, we've learned to do plumbing together. We're doing gardening together. We cleaned the pool by ourselves. I mean, it was like huge. Wow. I just thought it just was always crystal blue. And so that's kind of it. We were having fun, but you know, we're still here and happy and laughing and it's 12 weeks. That's, that's good. And it'll probably be a little longer. And it's funny to see, cause I can, I can feel your energy. And if this is the toned down version, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Chris, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what quarantine life is like and uh, maybe a little story? Well, um, I say it's a very, uh, it's a struggle in the beginning because it's really different. I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm a little bit like Cindy all around, but you know, speeching all over Brazil or working in my office for very long, many hours. So my house is something I come in and out. I'm not something that I take care of things, of little things about the house, you know? So suddenly I'm almost 90 days at home. So, um, I've been, I've been looking into corners and looking into things and fixing things that should be fixed a long time ago that I really didn't realize I needed to fix them all. And, but it was good because I had time to, to think about many, many different things. I mean, how I work and why I work that way and how can I work in another, in another way. It's a moment to stop and rethink some things. But I also had a little the response took for me the responsibility of fixing the world. I mean, not the world, but Brazil, which is a mess, politically a mess. And, uh, and people talking all over the place about many things. And I say, you're, you're losing focus on what is the problem because we have a, a, pandem a pandemic that we have to take care of, a, a, problem, a, a social problem that in Brazil, it's even harder that we have to take care. And the businesses and economy, why are you fighting politics at this moment? I mean, yeah. it's really out of Incredible. Uh, any kind of sense. So I took a little bit, a bit for me. So I was, you know, trying talking to people and bringing the white flag back some way. Mm. But at the end, I said this week, I said, you know what? I mean, started from before yesterday. I said, you know what? I have to relax a little bit about that because I'm not going to be able to do this by myself. If people are not aware, I mean, of course, it's not by myself, go totally, but I mean, taking this responsibility to, to move things. And at this yeah. point, you know what? I have to leave little them taking care of themselves a little bit because it's a, it's a Can't fix the world, because, even though we would like to. <laughs> yeah, it's, so we have a fantastic city, you know, in a, Sao Paulo. And Sao Paulo is suffering very, very much with this uh, political fight more than any other states and cities. And 40% of our invoicing, I mean, is, is Sao Paulo, of the country. Uh, yeah. So it's a, But I it's think we're going to... It's a... It's, yeah, no, it's, a, it's something that we're all kind of going through and, and working it out and trying to find the best way forward. Um, and, and I think all of us that are, you know, women that tend to have our hands in the pie and getting it done, it's very hard to let go. And I think that's part of the, part of the process that we're, that we're learning with all this. Liz, yeah. why don't you share with us a little bit? How is life Ooh. in South Africa? We have very strict lockdown here. And Phil and I have been in our new home for 12 weeks without moving. And today I had a little bit of fun. I got a little parcel and I opened it and it was from one of my ex-designers 20 years ago. And he sent me a little present. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I and want so, one of that. I need one like and, this. <laughs> And so my husband walked into the room and he says, oh, my God, have you used my underpants to make yourself a mask? So we had a good laugh about that. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, how nice. Always so elegant. Never missing a beat, Liz. <laughs> so, Tiffany, tell us a little bit about Boston. Things are good in Boston, and uh, Cindy, I apologize for the big crash noise. Uh, my cat has just decided to tear down the shower curtain as we are on this on this forum. So that's kind of the life of working at home right now. That happens. Um, 
but things are opening up in Boston and we're starting to th see things be a lot more positive. And I'm also working ho at home with my husband who also is working from home. And it, it's, it's been kind of fun because ironically, my husband happens to work for the company that's created the first coronavirus vaccine uh, called Moderna. So um, we keep Which joking in our household that he, um, nobody wants to talk to me anymore. I used to be the interesting one to talk about luxury travel. And now when we're meeting people, all they want to do is stop and talk to him about the vaccine. So um, we're it's very amazing. hopeful with that. It's in clinical trials right now, but you know, um, we're feeling positive here. I'm definitely feeling hope and, and very positive. So yeah, that's amazing. And it's incredible to have both of you in that household, because you really have the pulse of the future. And, you know, we need talk each about other. A, <laughs> yes, actually, we all need your husband. If you keep, you know, please treat him well. Be kind. Be nice. anything. I don't get any inside scoop, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's fantastic. Uh, we wish him a lot of luck. Um, so I'm going to start the panel um, with a question for Liz. Um, there is no doubt that anybody that wants to make a trip to South Africa in, a luxury, in the luxury realm would be very, very fortunate to have an experience at the Royal Portfolio. It is probably one of the most active brands in both so, uh, sustainability as well as social responsibility. If, you know, I've, last time I was there, it's, and it's something that the staff rave about it. You know, they're so honored to be part of the, of the, of the portfolio not only because of the incredible property and of course the stamp of approval, but more than anything about the quality of life, the training, the careness, and the feeling of really being part of a family. And one of the questions that we got, and we got this from two journalists, um, we got it from Ricardo Gallosa, who is a journalist and the founder of a renowned website called Indigo. He used to be the ex-editor of Casa Magazine. Um, there's always a question about how do, you, how do you manage your social and sustainable responsibility and projects so that they don't fall into that marketing scheme? Because the truth is that what everybody's saying, that the traveler of tomorrow really wants to, and myself and all of us included, really wants to base their choices on brands and companies that are actively, actively being socially and sustainably responsible. So how do you promote that so that you, know, you can help us find the right uh, brands to, to, to work with and to purchase, and yet not fall into a marketing trap? It's a very you know, difficult thing to manage. Um, so I'll let you answer that and see, you know, sh show us the way. Well, I think, first of all, one has to be very authentic in what one does, because you might be a good marketer, but guests are so enlightened these days that they soon see through that. So it's very important yeah. for us to always be authentic. And we are a family in business. And every staff member is part of our family. And um, if you go through our staff, they've been with us for a very, very long time. Um, when we started Royal Malawan 20 years ago, we still have the first person we employed plus 62% of that opening staff 20 years ago. So they are wow. getting a bit old, as am I, but um, we have lots of fun together. And, um, you know, we live by our purpose and we have a statement and everybody has to carry theirs around with them in their pocket and they have to be able to recite it. And I think this holds us all together <clears throat> to have the same purpose um, to go forward. And it's to give our guests a complete experience and a perfect stay. So how have we... Um, changed recently. So instead of concentrating on our guests, we are now concentrating on our foundation. Our daughter runs the foundation. And, um, you know, our focus in the foundation has always been on education, because we believe you can do nothing with it without education. But we've changed our focus from the education now to a feeding scheme. And um, a lot of the schools where the children used to have lunch provided, the schools are now closed. The parents have no jobs. And so we are trying now to feed them. And um, it's quite a big job because there's so many thousands of, of undernourished children and people. 
And um, so we've just created a Royal Portfolio Bond. And Fantastic. that bond, um, the guests are buying them for, for future stays. And what if they spend $1,000, we give them um, an extra, well, I, actually it's 10,000 Rand. If I'm not going to start converting because then I'm going to be incorrect <laughs> in my <laughs> statement. So for 10,000 Rand, they buy a bond. And of course, they can buy as many as they like. And then we give um, a 250 to our um, foundation, we, an extra, and they get an extra amount on their stay. So actually, we are getting a very little, but the guest is getting the most, and our foundation is getting a huge bonus as well. And the guests can use these bonds for any future stay, and um, we haven't limited the time to um, make them rush, because we none of us know when our borders are going to open. Yeah. So um, also our um, foundation concentrates on conservation. So we have turned a lot of farmland into um, game land. And it's such a rewarding thing for us to um, see fences come down and to see the game from Kruger coming across to, um, to eat the trees and the grass that was previously um, perhaps for cattle or for mm -hmm. um, other types of farming. So we have extended the, um, the, the, the land a lot and that's very rewarding. Um, we have uh, 72 rangers stay with their families, that is the total number on Royal Malawan land. And every day they are uh, patrolling to make sure that our um, animals stay safe because there's a big um, worry now that people need the food but we still have to protect our animals for 20 years we've been preserving our rhino and um, leopard and whatever so we, we can't let that go now so that's how we're coping with the current situation it's it's amazing and i hope that you know the hoteliers that are listening to us i think you're the way that you've you know that you formulated the bond is, is so nice because it allows for uh, cash flow, um, you know, so that you can support, in this case, the the children. Um, you're giving back 25 percent, so it's it is an incentive for the guests to take advantage of because, unfortunately, it is within our nature that we're always trying to find, you know, a way to to make the most of it. And so it's it just makes the machine work, and I think it's fantastic. I think it's really good, and it's important for people to also appreciate. You know, there was so much energy on negative tourism, you know, how we would impact the environment and all that. And it was interesting when you look at uh, South Africa and safari, the lack of tourism is actually open space for poachers. So, you know, it's, it's an important cycle to remember. And I think a lot of people have realized how important tourism is, you know, when you stop everybody, the, the negative go away and you just, you know, stop and look and think, wow, this is really important for the economy, but also for sustainability as, as Liz was mentioning. So, very admirable as always. Um, Kiris, I have, a, I have a question for you. You're known as a serial entrepreneur in Brazil. You're um, you know, highly, um, highly focused on innovation. And these are historical times and everybody knows that crisis uh, opens opportunities at, for uh, entrepreneurship. Um, also, uh, you've been very, very active in utilizing your skills as an entrepreneur to similarly to, to Liz, to try to promote uh, donations and help people through your, your skill. And I would like, I'd love for you to talk about that because Brazilians have a tendency to be very sporadic. Like we have, a, we, we work on donations based on crisis. So something happens like now and people donate and when it goes away, they stop and they wait for the next crisis to come and then they donate and then they stop. And so right now there's a movement going on in Brazil to say, you know, is there a way that we can make this permanent and long lasting and not just sporadic when something happens? And so Chris, um, I'd love for you to talk about what you've been working on in, in Brazil. Yes, it's uh, actually it's not a habit. We don't have donations, funds, parties, balls, this kind of donation uh, active way of life. Nobody, nobody has this on their ab habits every day. So one night I had a dream and this idea came out of a dream. I had a dream that everybody would donate every month 
uh, some food to people that need food because actually we we die in Brazil more for uh, for lack of food than of COVID-19. Uh, COVID, COVID I don't know how to say that. Yeah, in COVID-19. Uh, yeah, <laughs> COVID-19. So it's it's more it's more dramatic the the lack of food. So. If everybody had the habit of donating one, only one kilo of food every month, this could be done like a habit every month and forever. And if we imagine 100 million people donating one kilo, it's 100 million kilos. And it's very simple. It's a simple act that can change our world here. So the idea is we promoted, I promoted the first um, marathon of uh, entrepreneurship online where we added lots of entrepreneurs to give uh, ideas, uh, suggest innovations, suggest mm -hmm. things that the entrepreneurs can do to get out of this crisis. And it was a 20 minute talk for each one, like a TED talk and very, very interesting people with very interesting points of views and ideas for the entrepreneurs. And this was shown live on, on LinkedIn and uh, YouTube. So everybody could access. But to access, you had to donate one kilo of food to doesn't matter who. So you can choose to whatever you want to donate. And you make your donation and send us a, a picture, a little video of this emotion, that moment of this donation, how you felt about that. And so we received all of these videos. And when we received the, the, the inscription for the event, plus the picture, we send them a link to see the, the event. And, we and with that, we stimulated 25 tons of, of uh, donations when, in the first marathon. And the second one was most, almost the same thing. And uh, the idea is that we have one every month to keep this a habit. It says that when you do things repeatedly for more than 21 days, you, you incorporate it as a habit. habit. So <laughs> we're trying to incorporate the, the donation of one kilo of, of of food, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter to whom, it doesn't matter when. The thing is, please do so. And the companies that would sponsor the event had to donate 10, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a concept a in Brazil, which is a, ba it's a, it's a basic basket, basket of um, nutrition. Food, right? what, so, yeah, of what food. you would so need for the month, let's say. Yeah. It's a it's a basic we call it basic basket. It's a basic basket of one family can uh, need, is a need of one family for a month. So we we ask the companies to donate at least ten basic baskets. It doesn't matter to whom. Also the same thing to a to a, a, a I don't know a community or to a family or to it doesn't matter. So with te these ten donations of these ten baskets, they can add them themselves to the, our to our event. So and their logo would be there. And we had lots of companies that would donate and they send the videos of these donations, the, the employees of the company going for the donation. And so this is something that you do from your heart and you do with your hands. It's much better than sending a check to someone that you don't know how and when this check gets and to whom. It's not that this is not good, but I think when you do something with your hands, you feel it better. So this can stimulate the habit of, uh, of uh, people donating. Let's see if it happens. We want to stimulate a natural and and continue donation forever, well, even after the COVID-19. I think it's I think it's such an amazing project. And one of the things that I love about it is it's actually two things. Firstly, it's so nice to be able to say you have to donate and you can donate to anyone. And because the truth of the matter is in Brazil, you know, we, we have a lot of either you have help at home or you, you know somebody that needs help because it's all around us. And so when you, as, as Chris was saying, when you can choose who you're going to give it to and you have that connection, the emotion and the, you know, it's so it's so touching. And it's so my daughter now, you know, as she's older, she's always comes and says, Mommy, you know, it's really weird. It's so much nicer to give than to receive. Like I feel so much more energy when I give and, and, and it's true. And so, and the second thing I love about it is the fact that you used videos and photography to, to confirm the donation, which is so nice because you're sharing the moment, you're sharing the joy of it. And it makes yeah, it so a, easy to do. Yeah, it's not a confirmation, but it's a way to share the idea. And this goes into a big album. We have a huge album into internet with every 
video and pictures there. So you add yourself to the album and to this movement of donating, you know. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's really moving. It's really happening and it's nice. Yeah, congratulations. I think it's a phenomenal idea to use your skill of entrepreneurship and make it so easy for people to participate. Congrats, I think it's great. Um, Tiffany, I wanted to ask you, you know, we've been talking in most of the panels and everybody knows that everybody goes through, a, they go through phases, right? Us, uh, it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, you go through maybe first time you had shock, then you were in denial, then you go into maybe a silence mode and all of the phases that people go through and all of us possibly in different moments and spending different lengths of time, We've, I've noticed that the social media scene has also had its own phase. You know, some, I think at the beginning, maybe a bit of chaos and then silence and then confusion. And I'm not sure what it is and where we are and where is it going? Can you share with us a little bit of how that, um, how that process came up, how you see it? Well, I don't know about you, but the last three months have felt like a decade. If we think back to March, um, when all of this started happening, you know, exactly what you said, you know, we, we had so much confusion and hesitation of not knowing what was going to be happening next. And we were seeing hotels shut their doors almost immediately and lay off and furlough workers. So with that, you know, um, and not knowing what, where we were headed, there was a lot of confusion in the fact that we didn't know how to market even through social media to people. And what would be the right tone? And is this, is this even appropriate? So I feel like March was kind of the time where we just didn't know what to do, but people quickly realized, and many of my clients realized that it was so important to stay present and to keep present in, in the marketplace and we'll figure it out as we go. And as we moved into April, I like to call it sort of the stay at home movement where we saw hotels be more creative than I've ever seen them be in social media. We saw fitness classes, we saw recipes, we saw cocktail making, we saw their charitable efforts. And we got to see, you know, inside um, bartenders making cocktails from home and a little bit closer look as to who the hotels were because they couldn't, they weren't open at the time. And, you know, I just want to go back to a point that Liz said that I really um, liked was the fact that, you know, if, if we're not showing authentic material or marketing to people, people will quickly see through that. So, you know, having yeah. sincerity and understanding the tone and the severity of what is happening and being respectful of that was highly important in the past couple of months. And I'm feeling so much optimism now. Here we are finishing up May and we're starting to take the lid off everything. We're starting to come out of our shells. We are starting to, hotels are working to refit their hotels and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to, um, update their sanitization and health practices and how you will socially distance when you travel. And so the communication now has been about showing people this trust, safety, and flexibility in you know, what the experience is gonna be like now. And so we don't feel like we need to be hiding so much anymore. It's now, okay, we're slowly getting ready. We're ready to kickstart travel again. I'm, I might not be ready to travel right now, but I might book at the end of the summer. What's it going to be like for me? And so it's more important than ever now that hotels start to communicate what this is going to look like, because, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling optimistic. I know we have so many borders still closed, but, you know, I, I see so many new announcements of airports and dates and hotels opening. And, and I think it's time now that we start to share all of this. And I hope it's my hope that in the future, the marketing continues to stay the way it's been sort of in the April mode, giving us a more sincere, less glossy and um, more authentic view of what hotels are doing. No, and I think and it's, I think it's what you mentioned also. I think social media has been, you know, just lagging behind, but very much in connection with where we are. And now that people kind of like accepted and, you know, realize this is going to it's going to be like this and. It, it, and we're going to have a chance to, depending where you are in the world, because the states, you guys are really talking, depending in, of your state, of opening up, 
um, you know, Asia is already very much uh, in looking at a, in Europe as well, looking at a domestic movement. And so things start to come back. And it's interesting to see that process. But I think you're right. I think as it's almost like teaching people to walk again. You know, I, I had a friend in Mexico who took a took a plane and you know he was walking through the airport like oh, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna get in the plane you know and we're like oh my god <laughs> wow you know and then he got there and we're like wow he got there you know and all of us here we did this three times a month four or five depends if you're doing right. international or local but now to celebrate that somebody actually managed to fly one you're like wow what a mad I, you know, you know I think it gives us so much appreciation maybe maybe these were some things we took for granted I know that I traveled sure. so much and now I can't wait for my first trip and it's going to be so special it's allowed us to slow down and really appreciate everything yeah no and for sure there was more you know people are like wow you're traveling I'm like well it's not all that glamour now I'm like it is traveling is glamour like I, <laughs> pretty glamour. I can't wait to, you know it's like it is I'm dying pretty to glamour is when you get to stay at the Royal Malawan <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I told Liz that my daughter's first safari was at Royal Mala One, and I think I doomed her for life because I don't know what to, where, where can she possibly go from here, but definitely a memory she'll never forget. Um, on that note, Cindy, I have a question uh, for you, and it's actually um, from two very dear partners of ours, Eduardo Gas, who's CEO of Selections in Ski USA, and also together with Jack Ezon from Embark Beyond. Um, and you are talking a lot about in the same uh, topic, you've, you've also been uh, having a movement of getting back to business. Um, and what Eduardo and, and um, Jack have been talking about is the uh, jumpstart travel. And basically the concept um, that it's about getting back to your old routine and getting out there and getting the machine working. Um, at Tail Portfolio, we've been working a lot with our partners as well. And we've kind of, it's all, everybody's talking about the same thing. We, we were coining it more, let travel ignite travel. And the idea behind it is really for all, all of our partners, if you're a hotel owner, if you're um, you know, in the airline business is one that we're talking about, talking to, is if we're gonna have a low occupancy in the you know, first few months, why don't we all push an effort so that we allow the travel community to be the first to get out there and show everybody how it's done. I think one of the things I like about Let Travel Ignite Travel is we're putting the travel industry, the middlemen, the travel agents um, as the experts that they are to lead the way so that there is no doubt that the whole world is gonna look to them as the experts to say, well, how does it go? How did you get, where did you stay? How is the experience and so forth? And so it's really a movement to get hotels to say, yes, I'm gonna have, I'm willing to give X percent of occupancy to the hotel community and the airlines can say, I'm willing to give X number of seats to the hotel community. So you guys could be the first one to experience it. Um, and then within all that, there's also some concern because you know, there are some people that are not ready to travel, maybe because, you know, they're in the group of risk group, or maybe because they have somebody at home that's ill or, and it's tremendous pressure. And so we want to make sure that we come that we ignite a campaign that helps without stepping on people's toes or making people uncomfortable. How do you, you know, how do we do that? Well, so as everyone knows, I've been a huge advocate to get out and get going, but I totally get the risk. Um, I have parents that are 86 years old that normally they would already be at our cottage in Northern Michigan, but you know, they're uh, of that age and they've got heart problems. My dad's diabetic. My sister who's younger than me has heart problems. I would never suggest in a, in a million years that they jump on the plane and they get out there. What I feel and what I've been a huge advocate of, as you know, Tina, and people that follow me is that those of us in this industry, it, we have to be the voice of reason and we have to be the voice of calm. Uh, I do believe fear breeds fear. And when I hear hoteliers or I hear uh, people in the travel industry say things, and I've been on calls, on panels, on huge webinars where uh, even a young travel advisor said, I don't think I'll ever 
get on a plane again. And I, I literally looked at him and said, you know, and I'll do respect. I think you need a new job. I mean, and I, I wasn't trying to be mean and I did get a little backlash from that. I do get backlash on a regular basis from some people that don't agree, but uh, I've already had trainers out. Marsha Murphy for my team has already been out. We're helping open up hotels. I leave in a week uh, with another trainer to go to Rhode Island. Uh, we will be documenting that entire trip. I'm going to show how positive it is. No matter if I'm wearing a mask or not, I will absolutely show the positive side of this. I also think that we have done a disservice as hoteliers. I mean, I have a restaurant here in Orange County. You know, it's a, it's a, prime steakhouse we've been sold out for for well it's a 17 year old steakhouse but we've been for five years sold out even at the rail 150 seats top 100 on open table top 100 in travel and leisure we had to shut that down and in three days pivot to takeout and when you take a you know bone-in ribeye and try to do a takeout is not easy but what we did a disservice of i think the whole industry and this is what we talked about with our restaurant as we began to open up Great hotels, and, and Liz will tell you this, have always been clean, have always had hygiene. But now all of a sudden we got to, oh, we've got to have a director of hygiene. We got to have a director of cleaning. Well, what do you think the director of housekeeping was doing in a luxury hotel? Not cleaning. I mean, the same chemicals. I mean, it, it was only a year or two ago we had bed bugs and nobody was like, oh, wow. And then you said, you know, Chris said herself, like the Zika, the whole, I mean, and you all know I was in Rio during the Olympics, you know, where the CDC said, oh, don't worry about that mosquito. I mean, it, you know, it only flies three miles. And I said, well, what do they tag it? I mean, how do you know? I mean, it's, it really does get to a point that there are two sides to this. And I get it. I do get it. But those of us that are in travel, we must, we must move forward. We must take a leap. Mm -hmm. Even if I was at risk, okay, and I'm not, you would never hear me say, I'm not going. I would talk about my team. I would never say, no, I'm not going to be going. They wouldn't even know if I'm not going. I would be doing, but I'm not at risk. I will be the first one out. I was one of the last ones in, as well as Marsha. You know, she was in Rwanda, you know, from, and I was in Dubai and they kind of shut it down. And we thought like, oh, oh, we have to go now. So <laughs> when we talk about it, the, the confidence has got to be there. The confidence has got to be in guest speak though not in clinical speak, okay? I mean, Tiffany's husband is working on the vaccine for heaven's sakes, my new best friend. I mean, they can practice on me, I'm no problem. People go, well, they have to practice on animals or whatever. I go, no, they can come on over. I mean, at the end of the day, all right, you have to have confidence that this is not the first crisis we've been in and it won't be the last. And I think that's what's happened. We've bred so much angst and so much, you know, the news, no matter what country you're in, the news just continues to the point that we simply have got to step our toe in the water and get going. And I honestly know in my heart, and I'm, I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not a doctor and I, I'm not a scientist. I know in my heart, we will look back on this and say, wow, it is about H, I always call it H to H. You know, there's B2B, business to business, B2C, business to consumer, which is what our travel advisors do. I've always been about H to H. Our industry, hospitality is humans working with humans. Yeah. Or heart to heart too, which is Oh, true. I like uh, heart to heart. <laughs> Well, if anybody did know Cindy and you didn't understand her energy, boom, there you go. You just got a whole, you know, a Cindy <laughs> Novotny moment. Um, you're, you I know, would love to add something. I Thank would love please. to add something to Cindy, if, you, uh, if I may, please. I agree with you fully. The, actually, everything of this uh, social uh, distancing started because they have to organize the uh, hospitals, right? Right. which should be organized since ever because it was their responsibility anyhow. But okay, we are at home for 90 days or four weeks, wait, eight, 12 weeks waiting for them to do so because the, the, the COVID-19 is going to be there for next month, the other month, every day until we find a vaccine. I hope it comes soon. But I mean, what are we going to do? Are we going to be at home until the vaccine comes out? And there's a lot of people that have already been contaminated. And there's a lot of people that won't be, have, won't be have under any problem. I mean, it's a 0.3% of people that die, which die can die of any other disease. I mean, 
I really, I'm, I'm the one that I have been a, a great advocate because the, the, the economy in Brazil is going into a big disaster. Right. Yeah, Restaurants closed, hotels closed, yeah. everybody's closed. I mean, I don't know how we're going to get out of this if it takes longer. But we will. Yeah, no, but I think one of the amazing things <laughs> is, is the, you're right, it's the power of connections, as people are saying, and the human connection and how, you know, taking advantage of those that are able to travel and the, uh, able and willing to travel, those two, um, is, is key right now. And I think it's fantastic that there are people that are like Cindy, clearly, and Chris uh, that are, you know, advocates for it. And, you know, and then you have hoteliers like Liz, who says, who are fully on board as well to say, yes, I'm willing to take the, the travel community. And so it's that partnership and that, you know, cycle that has to start to turn again. Um, but I think at the same time, you know, it's not, it has to be okay to say, you know, I'm not going to go, but I'm all for you. I can't go because A, B, and C, and that's fine. But, you know, let's, for those that can, I think it's the moment it's to, up to, to you. move forward. Yeah, and it's, I, it's up to it's you. Up exactly. to everyone it's, to not, decide. It's not the government that will decide yeah. what we have to do. If they have, they had already 90 days to fix the hospitals. It's fine. Let us move and let us decide on our lives, you know, because it's until yeah. when are we going to wait for these hospitals to be ready? Until when? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a definitely a difficult one because it changes very much country per country and situations. But Tiffany, I have a question for you, which is from a very dear friend that is actually listening to us. Uh, Ricardo Zavedo, he's managing director of RA Hospitality Advisors. He was my boss when I lived in Singapore and worked for the Four Seasons. Um, and it has to do with uh, how social media is changing. I think when we look at the travel industry, we know that we're gonna go back to travel. There's no doubt about that, but that everything is gonna change a little bit. The way we do things, the way we communicate, you know, that, that all is changing. And we've noticed also in Brazil, which is you know, I think very often second to the US in users of Instagram, that there's, there's also a change there as people, um, I think people are being questioned. They've questioned their principles. Uh, they've questioned glamour. They've questioned, uh, you know, these basic principles in life. And I wanted to, to ask you, how do you see this perception of image um, and identity changing in social media? Well, I think that now more than ever, people are looking for transparency. They're really looking for people to show, you know, their authentic selves. And you're right, everything has been very glossy. And if you're looking at the influencer marketing, everything's about the beautiful pools and beautiful models traveling. And now more than ever, I think it's gonna be important that we show more meaningful content. And whether that be sustainability or about the destination or that human to human connection we just talked about, you know, maybe the insights, you know, meeting some of the people behind um, these properties that we wanna to travel to. And I absolutely loved, you know, what, what Cindy's saying about the fact that we have to get out traveling and it will vary for each person. But to me, sort of the new influencers now are the hospitality and the travel industry professionals. If we can get out there traveling and we can start to show and get away from what I had been phrasing FOGO, the fear of going out and start sharing our experiences um, with our, our following as a trusted voice, because in this right now, everything is about trust, then, you know, people will start to see and they'd start to say, oh, wait, okay, I'm now, I think I'm getting closer and closer to being ready. So um, I love the idea that we really need to kickstart travel and start getting out there when we can. And of course, it, it's a challenge because all the borders and state to state, it's, it's different, but I think it's our responsibility as travel professionals to really lead the way and show people that this can be done in a very safe and effective way and have a great experience, you know, to really come back and say the joy of travel is, is never went away. Um, the fact that we can get For out sure. and travel is, 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 is here. We're ready as soon as, as soon as we can, really. As soon as we can. No, and it, it's interesting. We had, for those that have been following the TL Talks, we had uh, Daniela Falcão, who is the CEO of Global Condé Nast in Brazil. And she was telling us, which is very much aligned with what you're saying, that there's been a shift in image and that before that perfect image that everybody looked for on Instagram, you know, the, the skin and the body and the clothes and the background, and that, is, is during this phase has changed. You know, people are sitting at home in pajamas. You know, they're using- People, people want relatable content. 
They want to be able exactly. to really identify. They don't want something that they want to aspire to be so much as they want to know that that could fit their lifestyle as well. Exactly, exactly. And it's it's changed so much that, they, you know, people want to relate to exactly what you said to another person. And she was mentioning, and it's very interesting how, you know, Vogue magazine, instead of putting out their, you know, I don't know, the best five dishes to, to cook or the best five exercises to, to you know, to, to do in quarantine, she's like, people want to know what are, what is her team? What's the Vogue team cooking at home? Like, I want to identify who's doing it and how are they doing it and why more than, you know, just a generic list. People want to be connected to people, to the real I hope, story. And, and I hope this is content that doesn't go away, that this wasn't just a buffer until everything opens up, that this sort of becomes what we want to, what we want to see now that, you know, magazines like Vogue and hotel groups and brands really give us that. Um, authentic self now. I think it's been a wonderful change. It's been an incredible pivot. There's been so much creativity. And I think we need to embrace that and not just kind of say, okay, well, that that month is over. We can move on now and go back to the way we were. I hope this is part of the new normal because I've certainly enjoyed it. Yeah, and no, I think it will. I think it would be a disaster if we went back as if nothing happened. You know, we're, we have to learn something from everything that we're going through and, and make the best out of it. And Liz, I wanted to on that note ask you, you know, you started, you had a shift in your career and you, you got into the hospitality at 50 after you sold your fashion business and you've made, a, you know, a benchmark of the Royal Portfolio. And as we're going now through this, you know, crisis, I'd love for you to share with us a little bit about a turning point in your career in the past and how maybe that experience has helped you to maneuver the, the, the crisis we're going through today. Yes, well, I've had a few different careers in my life. I was actually trained as a teacher. And I think, um, you know, that you learn a lot from everything you do. And I think from teaching, I learned to listen and to teach and to help. And then I went into fashion. And from my fashion years, I learned about colors and textures and fabrics. And then of course, always with travel, travel provides the excitement in life to me. And you pick up so many ideas and thoughts and wonderful inventions from travel. And it's just, I think it's part of all of our lives. And, you know, the whole project began from um, passion. We started with nothing and we started with 12 people. And now we have um, 650 that are very um, part of our family. And so far we still have all of them on board and we keep them busy every day, we're teaching them. We have podcasts, we have um, programs that they um, train on. And so we're in contact with them all day. And um, some of them have done um, innovation um, uh, things together. They've worked out in teams and they're giving us ideas of um, how we can bring in money or how we can save money or um, how we can improve things. And they're having a lot of fun doing, doing it all and it's keeping us all together. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. We had, and I, I keep thinking back to the past TL talks that have been so informative and so interesting. We had Natalie Klein, who's an icon in fashion in Brazil, join us a few weeks ago. And she reinvented her whole business uh, model through uh, this you know, past few months. And she was saying, you know, the first thing she did was she broke down her staff into little pods of six people and said, look, you're going to think about innovation. You're going to think about our, you know, principles of the company. And you're, and suddenly she, you know, disrupted the whole flow and, and reinvented uh, the, the company so that it is current, you know, and it's, it's speaking the right language and stuff. And I think as you're doing, you know, looking inwards to your staff and having them be the innovators within change is fantastic and definitely comes from your teaching. Uh, your days as a teacher, for sure. I'm sure that has a lot to, to bring out. Um, I have a question. The next question is actually for Chris. Um, as the serial entrepreneur, um, what, what um, ideas have you had through these fertile grounds of creation and innovation? And, you know, what they always say, crisis equals opportunity. And if that, if there's a ground for opportunity, it's now. And if there is somebody that's innovative and creative and is going to start another business, it's probably you, at least in Brazil. So 
what ideas have you had and what would you suggest to somebody today that might be looking, you know, a, a very dear friend, uh, Priscilla Alexander, who's going to be with us next week. She talks about shelf life. You know, she says everything has a shelf life. And it, if you are within the industry or any industry and you might consider the fact that, hey, my, maybe my business has a shelf life and, and this is it and I have to reinvent myself. What do you suggest or how do, how do they go about it? Uh, innovation, sometimes people think is a, a very, very uh, uh, sophisticated technique. And actually, the innovation comes out of observation. And at this time, what you have, to, what, I, what I'm suggesting people to do is observe, uh, observing what's going on, because things are changing, are changing very quickly in every country and in everything. So new uh, opportunities will come, not only opportunity, but new needs, new pains and new things that no, people wouldn't have before. And some things that they used to do are not going to do anymore. So you will have to change. All the companies will have to change the way they do things. If they want to keep exactly how they were, probably they're going to have some problems to adapt to this new consumer that is coming in with new needs or with new uh, way of seeing things and more human actually and more worried about the relationship, more worried about uh, health, more worried about uh, today I have to be happy today and not tomorrow and I'm not worried about what is going to happen on the long future. I'm worried about what I'm going to do this week. I'm worried about my friends and my family and people close to me, which probably before it wasn't that uh, obvious. So. We have to, on our each one of our small businesses, our our niche, observe observe uh, what's going what's going on, what where where people are leading to, and when you start looking, it's funny because it jumps into your eyes new opportunities, new things, and new ways of doing it's the same thing you used to do before. So, it's a it's a it's a matter of time, and also I don't think changes have to be done very quickly. I always say you have to, I'm quick, I am, I'm hurry, I'm in a hurry, but I want, I don't want to be too quick because of course today things are happening in a way because everybody's stuck at home. So everybody's working by, uh, by online and meetings are happening online, but this is going to be, it's not going to be a hundred percent like this in the future. It's going to be a halfway online, halfway at home, halfway on the, so it yeah. will have to check and have time to see how everybody is maturing into these new ideas and how, what is going to really is going to be there and will uh, will be there forever because not everything that we have we are doing now is going to be forever. So the new needs have to be uh, very slow but observing very much to to really cap capture what is the new need that the people's gonna gonna have. No, those are very wise words, um, obviously. Um, but it's true because I think there is so much change. And I think one of the things people deal with or struggling is the anxiety. You know, you're, if it's, you, you kind of feel like you need to do something now and I need, I don't know what I have to do. And, and the hard part is in order for you to observe, you have to maybe you know, let, let the sand settle a little bit so that you can see clearly and you can breathe and you, know, you can take a deep breath and, and, and give it time, as you mentioned, right? Don't try to hurry through it too much because you can stop, you stop to see uh, when you're running. So I think those are very, very wise words for sure. And you can make a mistake, you know. The other day I was seeing that big offices are changing 100% online. And I said, it's too early for this decision, you know? A big decision like yeah. this, I, I heard Twitter probably, the whole office or a big bank here in Brazil, they changed completely into home office. I said, is this going to be true in one year from now? I don't know, because you always want to see people in, their, in, in the eye and talk to people, especially a bank where you need some credibility, right? <laughs> so some businesses may yes, some businesses not that much. So I think we need some time and be calm and observate more than do, you know, at this time and have, take yeah. your time to see, especially in your business. I love traveling. I love going to hotels. I'm, I'm no, anxious looking in every option that comes up to see where is it going to be the first place I can go. And, uh, and really, there's going to be a very uh, 
people are gonna need very much to see each other and to travel and to meet people. We're, we're gonna, ha I think, I believe very much on the V uh, coming back, you know? I think it's gonna be a big hit when we open. Me too. Travel, I, we, we all hope you're right for sure. Um, and and that's, that's, I don't know, I think you, there's tremendous wisdom in what you're saying and I hope people can, you know, take it in and try to put it to practice because it's easier said than done because, you know, I, I felt it for a long time and um, I'm, I'm honored to be able to have such important content coming out. And on that note, Cindy, I wanted to ask you a very short, very special question. What is the role of a leader during crisis? So it's, it is all about leadership and to what Chris said, it's you can't go too fast, but you've got to hurry up a little bit on the fierce urgency of now because none of us were trained for this. Absolutely not. Uh, we got caught into what I call the championship game of our life. Uh, I do believe we have to lead with intent. We have to train with intent. You know, I have told everyone on my team, we have to train and work harder before the game. And I think everyone needs to look at that. You know, it's all about the practice. It's all about leadership, giving the, the actual foundation. You know, there's been a lot of leaders that have shown their true colors and they haven't been that great. There's been a lot of leaders that talk out of both sides of their mouth. And, and now the way you are today in the middle of this as a leader will definitely define you on the other side. I think that leaders need to have compassion. I think they have to have clarity, like tell me where I'm going, give me the time. I think they have to communicate more than ever. I don't think we will ever go away from this sort of communication, uh, even with clients. You know, before now it was everybody emailed and text. Now it's get on a Zoom call, have a quick call. I don't want to have Zoom meetings and I don't want to do any more Zoom galas and I don't want to do Zoom cocktail parties. But I do believe that the communication will stay, it be much better. And the one thing leaders need to do is understand that it is about certainty. Don't make me guess. A leader should have a clear vision of the future. Even if that leader says, I don't really know what to do, but this is my thought versus dark versus no getting back to anybody. So that's the key to leadership today is to be involved, be present, be authentic, be real, take the hit be responsible, and do not let them see you sweat. And would you add positivity to that? I think, <laughs> one, and I think another- Of course, positivity is all about it. <laughs> it's the compassion, the clarity. And people say to me all day long, if I get one more text, I mean, I know you're a keynote speaker, so you probably just fake positivity. Baloney, I fake positivity. My glass has never been half full. It's been bubbling over. And I've been doing that since I was a kid, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. No, and it's it's so very true. And I and that's that's why these TL talks started. It's because we need to have a voice of positivity and a voice. Even that's what I say. Let's not predict the future because we don't know. And that's right. okay. You don't have to know, but you have to keep going and you have to keep thinking and you have to motivate people to transform and to wake up in the morning and feel energetic and, you know, and things will start to happen. If you do that, as Chris right. says, and you observe, then new doors can open, you know, yeah. even maybe shutting a door is not a bad thing because a better oh. one is going to open. Right. Oh, it's like I say, you got to know which bridge to cross and which one to burn down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and one of the things that we've done, I don't know if, if the people listening know, we started a, a TL masterclass. And the first class we gave was Crisis Communication 101, which is a three series class. The next, the second class is on Monday um, with uh, Jeff Chatterton, who's an expert in communication. So we're trying to give as much, as many tools as possible for people to feel, you know, energetic and, and moving forward. Um, so thank you. Very powerful words. words. Um, I, I wanted to close off and I wanted to ask all of you, if, the, um, if everybody that's listening to us forgot everything that we just said, that would be very unfortunate. But if they did, and you wanted to leave them with one strong message, one takeaway to, to, to remember and to, you know, to keep close to them, what would that message be? And Liz, I'm going to start with you. Well, I'd like the message I'd like to leave is that doing good in Africa is part of doing business. And I, I think we have a responsibility to the people and to the land we live in. 
uh, thank you very much, Tina, for putting this all together and for giving us the chance. No, you're that's I those that's a few words, but so meaningful. And I hope that what you said about Africa could be, you know, felt and and put into place all over the world. But you what you said is very, very true. And when we go to Africa, you feel it. Um, and it's it's part of the beauty of Africa. So thank you so much, Liz. Uh, I can't tell you how honored I am to have you join the panel. It's fantastic. Um, Tiffany, you. tell us your takeaway. I just think it's so important now just to be transparent, communicate what's going on, and most of all, keep smiling and be positive because I think that when we smile, we feel different. Our body, our posture is better and you know, we stay optimistic and to just be kind and just be kind to each other and take good care of one another. Thank you. For sure. And keep your, take good care of that husband of yours because we're really counting on him. And his entire yeah. team. <laughs> and his team. And we only know him so far. So there you go. Chris, what is your message? I think it's uh, time to be anti-fragile, you know, to be, to transform, to, to innovate, to, to have a lot of empathy, to, you know, to take care of people, uh, take care of our lives and, and come up, come out of this much better than when we started. I think it's a chance. God gave us a chance to rethink things and let's take this chance to do it deeply. Very much so. I hope I, I my wish is that everybody listens to that and we make the most most out of it for sure. Cindy, take it home. All right. So I I will go right on to follow on Chris that I do think we were given an opportunity to look in the mirror. I do think that this has been a golden opportunity to realize that whatever got us here today is not necessarily going to take us in the future. And, you know, it's really easy to sit back in your easy chair and watch all this go by and, and think that I'll just wait for the, the email to tell me what to do next. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. You have to make it happen yourself. And I strongly believe that everybody does go back to zero when the rules change and the world shut down for renovation and we're all going to open at the same time. And those that say it can't be done, should just get out of the way of those that are doing it because I promise you, we will be better off on the other side. <laughs> love that. I love the other side. Um, so I wanted to thank the panels. They're giving everybody the opportunity regarding the Q&A, please send your questions beforehand. So we, we've been able to have a lot of people uh, sending their questions in advance, which is, you know, helps us a little bit to keep within the time. Um, I am very happy and honored to say that our next week's panel is already confirmed. Um, and so we're going to have our dear friend Priscilla Alexander, who is founder of Pro Travel and a very dear friend. Uh, we're going to have Francois de la Haye, which is COO of the Dorchester Collection. Um, we're going to have uh, Caroline Kremis, who's the president of SCIF, and I am a big fan of SCIF. I think they do an amazing job. And Adra Adriana Cavalcanti, she is the advisory board president of World Travel Mart Latin America with Reed Exhibitions. So it's going to be a very interesting panel next week. Please join us again. Ladies, thank you. I'm sending kisses, a tight hug. Enjoy you your all. weekend. I have to Obrigada, say... Chris. I have Thank to you. say I have to go to Kruger Park as soon as I can because it's my dream to go there. Congratulations go for you. your hotel well, list. <laughs> I hope you come and visit us soon. soon. <laughs> I hope so too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Tina, Thank very you much. Well. Bye, nice Thank to meet you. Thank 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 you.